There we go. Mm -hmm. Heading in where the fire is warm. Yeah. There was just trappers, traders, and Native Americans out here. No military. There's no forts out west yet. They uh, they weren't needed. You know, in the early days, the Native Americans and the trappers and the traders get along fairly well. Not great, but it's no different than Europe. All those countries have compatible lifestyles, but they don't always get along, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's the Wild West. Later on is the Wild Wild West, and later on is the Wild 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 West as things deteriorate. And that usually is, is because more and more people are flocking west. But in the early days, you know, these traders are here to trade with the natives. The natives want these things. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these things are great leaps forward in technology. And beaver trappers, you know, they, they travel pretty lightly across the land unless they ask a beaver, uh, and they might disagree. But um, but there's no one pushing each other around. No one's taking land away yet. So everybody's pretty free and nomadic. So the dynamic's not that bad yet. Um, when this fort started in 1833, there's no Colorado. There's no towns or villages yet in what would be Colorado. This is pretty much choppers, traders, Native Americans, and a few trading posts. And only 43 years later, Colorado becomes a state, and there's a couple colleges. So you see how fast the West was changing. Mm -hmm. And that's why places like this... Well, this one lasted a long time for a trading post, 16 years, you know, um, which doesn't sound like very long, but in the chaotic, dynamic soap opera that was the American West, uh, 16 years is an anomaly. That's a good run in those days, because just, everything's just changing so fast. But even up north, I don't know if you ever heard of John Coulter. He was a famous mountain man. He was with Lewis and Clark when they mm -hmm. came west. And Lewis and Clark, they, they, were, they got back to St. Louis in 1804. Well, on the way back, John Coulter, one of their members, he decided he wanted to go back to the mountains. So he didn't return to Missouri. He went back to the mountains. And in 1807, he's the first white man that they know of going into what is now Yellowstone National Park. Okay. 1807 is early. Mm -hmm. There's nothing out west yet. Only 65 years later, and I'm older than that, they felt the need to make Yellowstone a park and save it. So the west was a chaotic soap opera. Right. <laughs> for, for sure, yeah. Look at me when I was sitting out here, I go, man, he's like a bowling ball. Uh -huh. those, those ladies in the gift shop, they feed him too much. <laughs> he's, he likes those furs, those huh? The yeah. fabrics, nice now, these are the kind of things the natives would trade for mm -hmm. when they came in. And they came from all over the world. You know, this was back in the 1830s and 40s, so let's think about this. Ch um, England was a major manufacturing center, so a lot of the guns, knives, scissors, pins and needles, blankets, and fabrics came from England. There was fabric from India. There was tea, silk, and vermilion from China, glass beads from Italy, coffee from South America, sugar from Cuba, guns from Belgium, shells from the Pacific Ocean, colored feathers from Africa, and on and on. Mm -hmm. So things were moving in those days, just like today. They just moved slower on right. smaller ships. Yeah.